Hello and welcome to this A-level video on vectors and scalars. I'm going to talk about the similarities and the differences between vectors and scalars. We're going to try and identify which quantities fall into the family of vectors and which are scalars. And then we're going to have a go at adding some vectors together, which is slightly different to adding normal numbers. So here we go. All right, so quantities that we can measure fall into two different categories, vectors and scalars. Now, there's a similarity between the two. Um, they both have what we call a magnitude. Now, magnitude you can think of as like the size of the quantity, the size of the vector. So how big it is. So for example, um, it might be 19 degrees centigrade in this room. That's the magnitude of the temperature um, in the room. But there's one distinct difference between vectors and scalars in that vectors have a direction, whereas scalars do not. Scalars only have a magnitude. Its full definition is just its size. Whereas a vector, its full definition includes its size and the direction in which it acts. So for example, um, I could have a force acting from this point here on a certain object. The force might be, I don't know, 24 Newtons. And I could say, can I associate a direction with that force? Which direction does that force act in? And it most certainly does have a direction. And I'm going to say, for example, that the direction of the force is vertically upwards. So in order to specify this force exactly, I would need to say that it has a magnitude of 24 Newtons and a direction which is vertically upwards. So you can see there are two parts to the definition of a vector, where there's, whereas there's only one um, in terms of a scalar, because if I said, this, here's my room and it's 19 degrees Celsius or 19 Celsius at this point in the room, you can't really associate a direction with that temperature. You can't say it's 19 Celsius acting to the left. It's just 19 Celsius. So temperature would be a scalar, whereas force, like on the left, would be a vector because it has a direction. And if you don't know whether a, for, um, a quantity is a scalar or, or a vector, just think, ask yourself this question, can I associate a direction with this quantity? Is there a direction in which it acts? And if you can think of one, then it's probably going to be a vector. Okay, so that's the definitions and a slight bit of, uh, bit, bit of theory. So let's have a look at some actual quantities. Now here's a big bubble full of uh, different quantities that we could measure. And what we're going to do is we're going to put, it in these, put each one in one of these two columns uh, once we've decided which type of quantity it is. Now the first one, I'm going to choose is distance. Now distance, you know, is measured in meters or kilometers um, or inches or whatever. And you can say that something has traveled the distance of 24 meters. Now distance is a scalar, but there is another vector, another quantity that's very closely related to it, um, which is in fact a, a vector and it's displacement. Okay, so distance is actually a scalar whereas displacement is a vector. Um, and in order to give you a different, uh, a sort of um, an insight into the difference between them, let's talk about running. Running is the most pointless sport in the world if you think about it in terms of the vector nature of displacement. Now here's a running track and here's the start finish line and here's a little man that's going to uh, run around the track. Let's just draw him up here. There he is. Okay. So he sets off from this point here and off he goes running around the track. Um, now by the time, this is 400 meter track, so by the time he gets over here, the distance that he has run is roughly 100 meters. Let's say he's gone a quarter of the way around the track. But his displacement is actually his distance in a straight line from the starting point in this direction. Because remember we're talking about displacement being a vector, i.e. the distance traveled in a certain direction. So his, his vector displacement at this point is probably somewhere around the region of 70 meters. Um, so off he goes again, runs around the track, he gets halfway around the track, he gets to this point here, and he's traveled 200 meters. That's the distance that he's traveled. But as you can see, his displacement, uh, the distance moved in a particular direction, is only this far, which is possibly not as far as it was when he was there. So let's say it might only be about 60 meters. So that's the length of this line effectively. And off he goes again, 
he runs all the way around here, he's traveled 300 meters. So the distance that he had traveled is 300 meters, but using an argument of symmetry, and I know this diagram isn't particularly accurate because I'm drawing it by hand, he's traveled this far. So his displacement is once again 70 meters. And then he finally runs the last 100 meters, ends up over here, back where he started. So his distance, the amount he's actually run, is 400 meters. But his displacement, as you can see, is zero. He's back where he started. So his displacement, as in the distance he has moved from his starting point in a straight line in a particular direction, is zero. So he hasn't actually gone anywhere, which proves to you that running is completely pointless. So that's distance and displacement. So let's move up to this quantity, speed. Speed, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, meters per second, preferably in physics, um, is a scalar. But again, it's got a pair, it's got a velocity. So with speed, you would say 20 meters per second. With velocity, you would say 20 meters per second to the right or north or something like that. You would specify its direction as well. So velocity has a direction as well as a magnitude, making it a vector, whereas speed only has a magnitude, making it a scalar. Okay, let's see if we can place these others. All right, well, let's start at the top. Temperature we've already discussed. No direction associated with that, so that is um, a scalar. Force is a vector because it has an, um, a direction. Acceleration is also a vector. You can, be, you can accelerate in a certain direction. You accelerate forwards, you can accelerate backwards. Space rockets accelerate upwards, things like that. Energy and work are effectively the same sort of thing. They're both scalars. Mass is a scalar. You can't say, I've got a mass of 45 kilograms acting to the right. It's just 45 kilograms. So that's a scalar too. Momentum is related to velocity. So that's a scalar. You can have a momentum in a certain direction. Gravitational field strength. The field lines of gravity always point in a certain direction, i.e. vertically to downwards towards the center of the Earth. So gravitational field strength is a vector. Time, although you can only, you, you, some, some people sometimes say time only runs in one direction, you, time can't run backwards. That's not quite the same thing as, as associating a direction to the quantity. So time is a scalar and volume, the volume of, of an object is also a scalar. So all of these ones you can see have a specific direction that you can associate with them and these ones don't. Okay, so that's the difference between vectors and scalars. In the next video, we'll look at how to add scalars, sorry, how to add vectors together to produce what we call a resultant vector.